Today is the day. It is finally time to unleash my anger and share it with the world. Today we'll be talking about Refold. More precisely, about all of their problems. If you don't know what Refold is, then I'll give you a quick overview before jumping into some of the reoccurring problems in the community and in their roadmap. If you're a part of the community already, then feel free to skip ahead to all the juicy parts. So Refold is a language learning business that have made it their mission to make language learning straightforward, easy and fun. They have a website on which you can find the Refold Roadmap which is basically an introduction to Refold's philosophy and their methodology that is broken down into a step-by-step -step guide that walks you through the different stages of learning a language. It goes all the way from when you are just starting out, when you made the decision to learn a language, the expectations you should have for yourself, to when you learn your first few thousand words, you are starting to read your first book, to when you can watch native shows, read the newspapers, and so on. Refold's method is heavily influenced by immersion learning, which basically means that they're not there to teach you the language. You won't find any grammar tables or language lessons on their website. Instead, what they try to do is guide you through your own immersion learning journey. Traditionally, immersion referred to going to a different country, interacting with people there and so on. But with the help of modern technology, Refold is trying to bring awareness to the fact that you don't need to spend thousands of dollars on courses or trips to different countries. You can do immersion in the comfort of your own home. Refold is also advocating for language learning being a fun experience as opposed to drilling grammar and learning vocabulary by heart for hours and hours every day. If you want to know more about Refold, I definitely recommend you to check out their website. They will have the full guide and everything is written down step by step. So definitely do check that out. There will be a link in the description. Refold is not just a business with a website though. A big part of Refold is their community. They have a system of Discord servers where you can interact with learners from different backgrounds learning all kinds of languages. You can share your questions and struggles and get advice from other people who may be going through the same. And there are usually more experienced learners around to help you out as well. For quite some time after Refold was first founded, the community aspect was probably the biggest part of Refold. And I was actually going to criticize their lack of a business purpose or any kind of orientation that they had planned with their roadmap. But just recently in their mid-year livestream, they mentioned a few things that they had been working on and where the business was headed and it honestly sounds pretty promising. Obviously there is a lot more to Refold than I can summarize in a few sentences, so feel free to check out the links in the description if you want to know more about who they are or what they do. Say hi if you happen to join the Discord and now let's move on to the next part to some of the more questionable things happening in Refold, some of the more questionable things about their methodology and the community, some of which honestly just make me mad sometimes. I'm not trying to spread hate per se and I would actually consider myself a member of the community and a loose follower of their roadmap, but that doesn't mean that they're the ultimate good and that they get everything right, right? So I want to talk a bit about those shortcomings and I would love to hear what you think. Also, these are in no particular order, just what I came up with. The first problem is actually something that Ethan, the CEO of Refold, addressed in his recent livestream. It is the fact that a large portion of Refolders were and still are Japanese learners. So we've reached 27,000 members on Refold Central. Um, in the Refold Japanese server, we're up around 13,000. Obviously, Japanese is dominant, so we definitely want to grow the other communities up to that level, but uh, we're really excited to see the number of people coming in and the amount of activity. Uh, they make up a large portion of the total community, and this is heavily reflected in the Refold roadmap and methodology. This is important to note because Refold suggests that at some point in your learning journey, you start watching movies and TV shows with target language subtitles. For many, many languages, it is really hard, if not impossible, to find accurate subtitles. There are also a ton of tools to navigate the Japanese language 
And for other languages, these tools might be totally underdeveloped or might not even exist yet. I'd also like to add that the OG refold method was developed for people in their late teens or early 20s with a lot of time and very few other responsibilities. I don't re exactly remember their original recommendation for how much time you should be spending, but I do remember that it was a timely investment. And don't get me wrong, learning a language is a timely investment, but I'm so glad that over the years we have come to be a more inclusive place, be more accommodating for people with different lifestyles, different levels of busyness, when before it was very elitist, rather exclusive and not as much of a welcoming place. Which, weirdly enough, some people think that that was the better refold. Next up, we have fun in language learning, which could honestly be a video on its own. Because I think that our understanding of what fun in language learning even means right now is pretty limited. And it is such a crucial part of sticking to learning a language long term that I think widening our perspective a little bit could benefit a lot of people. Refold has a pretty big focus on making language learning fun, but their understanding of fun in language learning is currently limited to just do what you enjoy in your native language as well. Watch a movie or a TV show, read a novel or a blog post. The problem with this is that, especially in the beginning, when you don't know any words, you don't know any grammar, you can't just pick up a book and read it for fun. You can't just look for a random show and watch it for fun because you won't understand anything. And while there might be people out there that have a blast watching something they don't understand for four hours a day, I just don't think that that applies to most people. But maybe fun doesn't have to necessarily be limited to only compelling input. Maybe fun could include things like noticing new words, understanding sentences, getting a grammar point, you know, the moment when it just clicks, following the main idea in a video, noticing the nuance in a word that was used. The discovery of the media should be a driving factor, especially in the beginning when most compelling media is still too incomprehensible to actually be fun. And most of these things are things that you can experience from day one. I feel like in general we need to shift our mindset a little that language learning always has to be fun. It feels a little like this is a counter reaction to the boring classroom drills and vocabulary tests. So now we always have to have fun at literally every single moment of our learning journey. My boyfriend said the other day, and I'm paraphrasing here a little, that having fun on a weekly basis is really important. But trying to have fun on a daily basis is kind of an unrealistic expectation. And I agree, because learning a new skill is never always going to be fun. It's just not realistic. Once you get better at video games, you gotta be attentive, you gotta learn from your mistakes, you gotta work on your weaknesses. If you wanna be an artist and improve your art, you gotta draw the same thing over and over again. You gotta study for that until you get it right. Even though you might want to be drawing different things. And then wanting to be a top athlete, you gotta work on your skills every day for thousands and thousands of times. You gotta analyze your technique and then people are out here wanting to improve their language skills but not doing anything that is even slightly unfun. This slogan, embrace the ambiguity, is probably the result of the previous point. Because when you try to have fun by watching something that you don't understand, it becomes frustrating pretty quickly. One of the first pieces of advice that you will find on the Refold Roadmap is to embrace the ambiguity and to not avoid the discomfort of not understanding something. While this advice is really good in theory, I think it is currently doing more harm than good in the community. Because again, it has been taken to crazy extremes on multiple levels. It is true that especially traditional learners, learners that have only ever studied a language in a classroom setting or from a textbook tend to be overly obsessive over understanding every little thing. Because that is how textbooks are structured. You learn your vocab, you learn your grammar, and then by the end of the chapter, you should have a perfect understanding of the chapter summary text or the listening exercise. Refold, however, has taken this to the complete opposite extreme where they essentially advise people to be okay with not understanding anything or very little with the reasoning that embracing the ambiguity is an important skill to curate. 
My problem with this is that in the early stages of language learning, what you're experiencing is not ambiguity, it is incomprehension. Ambiguity refers to something having multiple ways of being understood. So in language learning, we could say that ambiguity is when you don't exactly know the meaning of a sentence, or when there are multiple ways a sentence could be understood. It should not refer to a sentence that you can't understand because there are too many unknown words or unknown grammar structures. The other problem with tolerating the ambiguity, besides not knowing what they actually refer to, is that the community has taken it so literal and to such an extreme that there are now people sitting through hours and hours of incomprehensible input and they just endure that incomprehension instead of trying to reduce it. And again, as I said at the beginning of this segment, I think that this is really good and important advice in theory. I don't think that you need to stress over every little detail. You don't need to understand every little thing and finding an unknown word shouldn't cause a mental breakdown. But that doesn't mean that we have to sit through hours and hours of incomprehensible input. We can actually reduce that incomprehension. We can make things more comprehensible. The last thing about ambiguity that I wanted to mention is that I find it quite odd that refold pushes being super comfortable with ambiguity in your immersion, yet when it comes to speaking, there is absolutely zero tolerance for any unclarity or any mistakes, which then leads to... Refold had a really strict no output policy, meaning that if you hadn't already reached a really high level of comprehension, you were discouraged, if not straight up banned, from speaking your target language. The thought process behind this is that, as a beginner, if you keep making the same mistakes over and over, you keep repeating ungrammatical sentences, you will kind of internalize these and it will be really hard to get rid of later. So instead, you were advised to listen and read the language until you had a really strong intuitive sense of how the language is supposed to sound, how the language is supposed to be constructed, and how words are supposed to be used. And once you had reached that level, the words would just magically start to spill out of you. Generally speaking, again, it is not bad advice to delay your output practice a little bit, because especially in the beginning, you don't really have any words to say anyways, you don't know how sentences are formed, and you likely don't know what your language is supposed to sound like. However, even at a pretty early stage, there is absolutely no need to be scared of maybe sounding out a few words here and there or repeating a cool sh sentence that you heard in a show. It really only starts to be problematic if you repeatedly, over a long period of time, start to construct your own ungrammatical sentences that you don't know if they're right. And pretty much every single sentence that you do is your own construction and you don't get any feedback on any of the things you're saying. While this approach kind of scares new learners to practice their output, it straight up prevents advanced learners to ever move forward to a level where they can actually speak the language. There are so many learners in Refold that have spent hundreds if not thousands of hours immersing in their language and they have read hundreds of books without much problem, yet they feel like their language ability is not enough to actually speak the language. But speaking is a skill like any other. If you want to get good at speaking, you eventually just have to start doing it. Speaking in a foreign language for the first time is always scary. You're gonna forget super easy words. Forming sentences will be a real mental workout and forming the sounds in your mouth is gonna feel kind of weird. That's just kind of what you have to go through if you wanna get good at it though. After a while, someone must have noticed that there were actually a lot of people that are struggling to speak that the language would not just naturally flow if only you got enough immersion and that the standards they had initially set did more harm than good, really. They since loosened some of their output policies and reworked the roadmap to better reflect what we believe to be a better way of going about starting to speak. I think they now suggest to start writing practice before actually speaking, which I think is a pretty good suggestion. In my opinion, a lot of people could also benefit from some skill building just to get used to forming your own sentences, knowing how to convey your own thoughts in a different language, and just to make sure that you actually know the conjugations. There is actually a second point I wanted to mention, which I think is pretty obvious, but this approach is really not realistic for a lot of people. I already talked about the problems with the target audience or the core community of Refold, but there are a lot of language learners out there that might be taking classes 
or they might have already taken a year of language classes and just now stumbled upon Refold. And to tell them that these people are going to build bad habits if they keep talking in their classes and that for that reason they shouldn't do it is just not a realistic expectation. Speaking of education, there is another thing that I noticed refolders like to do, which is... In Refold, obviously, there are people that come from a more traditional language learning background, having had classes for, let's say, five years in high school. They come to Refold and say they haven't learned anything in those five years of classes. They then start learning with the Refold method, and within a few months, they find themselves making great progress, maybe reading their first book, understanding the show set they've always wanted to watch. First of all, obviously it's great that these people are finally seeing tangible results. Unfortunately, a lot of people seem to draw the wrong conclusion from that. They feel confirmed in their belief that school didn't do anything for them and immersion learning is the only real way to go about learning a language. I mean, it makes sense, right? They've been in school for so many years and yet they couldn't do anything in the language. And the moment they start using ref the refold methodology, suddenly they can see the progress. This is not the full story though. People really underestimate how much dormant knowledge you accumulate over the span of four years of classes. While it might seem like you can barely even remember the greetings, your brain made all these entries for different words and grammar structures. And while it might be really hard for you to access them, your brain is now more receptive to noticing and learning them the next time you encounter them. School is essentially like priming your brain to learn these things, which is something that coincidentally Refold also suggests you do through studying words in Anki and looking through a grammar guide. It's funny because a lot of people try really, really hard to deny the effectiveness of studying and I'll get back to why I think so many people are passionate about hating on school and on studying in a second. But what they like to do is point to us English learners to the perfect example of having become fluent through immersion. But when you try to make this argument, please remember that the majority of us English learners have had hundreds of hours of English classroom instruction before jumping on the internet and talking to people or starting to watch videos. We did not start our immersion from day one. We may not have become fluent in, in the classroom, but we have learned over years and years of education how to build sentences, how to have discussions, vocab drills, grammar drills, and so on. Finally, before moving on to the next point, just to get back to why I think that so many people feel the need to discredit school to such an extent is because refold or more broadly speaking immersion learning is a kind of counter movement to the traditional learning which admittedly can be rather dry. It's not that immersion learning is something particularly new and it's not something that Matt invented which I don't think he claims he did but with the world being more connected than ever, and media from all over the world being accessible at our fingertips, immersion learning no longer means having to go to the country to live there and talk to the people. With new tools and all the technology we have today, immersion learning is coming back in a new shape. Language learning can now be fun and efficient, which rightfully leads people to question the current language education system. I've had this conversation before and it's honestly frustrating because people are not really willing to listen, but let me try to explain anyways. In the Refold community, there is this belief that you need to spend so and so many hours a day to get fluent and the more the better and if you're not willing to spend thousands of hours learning a language, then really you're not gonna get to fluency. The reality is that you do not need to spend thousands of hours slaving your life away day after day just to learn a language. I said before that language learning takes a lot of time and I stand by that, but it is not the raw amount of hours that you put in that determine how fast you will reach fluency. What I then mean when I say that more time doesn't necessarily equal more progress is that in language learning, after a certain point, we're dealing with diminishing returns. Which just means that after a certain point, even if you put in more time, you're not making proportionally more progress. I don't know where exactly the cutoff is, so I'll just illustrate this with random numbers, but essentially, someone learning for four hours every single day for a year 
is not gonna learn twice as much in one year than someone who only learns two hours a day every single day for a year. A really ridiculous example is the eight hour, two hour one where obviously you can reach fluency within two years if you learn for eight hours every single day, but it's not gonna take you eight years if you only study for two hours every single day. Someone consistently studying for one to two hours every single day, actually being intentional about their time and not just staring at a screen, doing lookups, reading, studying some grammar, basically making good use of their time can definitely reach low level fluency within two years as well. Just to make this very clear, I'm not saying that people who put in more time won't make more progress. I'm just saying it's not proportional to the amount of time they put in. And it really isn't as much as people pretend it is. At the end of the day, how much time you want to spend learning a language is a personal decision. I just think that as you grow up, the value and your perception of time changes. So something that might have only been a small fun investment of three to five hours when you were a teen now suddenly seems like an impossible task when you work full time, you have a family that you want to spend time on, you have other responsibilities and chores to take care of. What we are currently seeing in Refold is that it takes about one and a half to two and a half years to reach some kind of proficiency anyways. And that even if you put in massive amounts of hours, language learning can only be sped up so much. Besides, language learning is not a race. For most people, it's going to be a skill that they will have to develop lifelong. There is never an end to learning a language. You'll always learn more things. So it really doesn't matter whether you reach fluency within two years, five years, or even 10 years. Okay, this one is really the result of a combination of one and three, and it is something I'm very passionate about personally, so take it with a grain of salt. But people just underestimate the absolute crazy power of reading. One of the first versions of the Refold Roadmap had like one tiny little segment of reading, and even now, reading doesn't really get the love it deserves. I get it, it's hard to market reading a book to an audience that just loves to watch anime because, you know, you can't just AFK read a book. Tolerating ambiguity also becomes really hard when suddenly you don't understand anything and you're literally just looking at words. Reading is an intense activity, I get it, but I think that is exactly why it is so powerful. It engages your brain, you can't passively read a book. That's why I'm not the biggest fan of the refold recommendation of starting to read with subtitles. Their reasoning is that the visual context helps you understand, the audio helps you learn the correct pronunciation, and helps you parse the grammar. And because dialogues are easier than novels. I'd look at it the other way around. I think having subtitles can help your understanding of the spoken language. But I think that having audio takes away a lot of the active component of reading. If you have the audio, you're just following along with your lines and you can skip over anything that is too fast or that you don't understand, but you're not doing any work essentially. You're not actively reading the subtitles, they are being read to you. And for reading, I don't see this as an advantage. There are some people, or actually quite a few people, that are scared of pure reading because they believe that the subvocalization will ruin their pronunciation and will lead to bad habits. We don't really have anything, any studies or people that show that this is true. Admittedly, we also don't have any studies that show that this isn't true. We do, however, have a lot of evidence, a lot of studies and people that show that reading is insanely good for language acquisition. It seems a bit paranoid to me to be scared of something that we don't even know is real. Especially when on the other side, there is this crazy thing that has been proven over and over and over again to be super beneficial for language learning. I get that you might not find reading the most fun, but the subvocalization thing seems super unreasonable to me. Especially when we have things like IPA charts where you can check your pronunciation very accurately. And then you can still do listening practice in tandem. It's not like reading and listening are two mutually exclusive activities. You can do 20 minutes of listening and 20 minutes of reading and you will 100% not build any bad habits. It's really that easy. 
The other thing about the roadmap that irks me a little bit is how graded readers are presented and how to go about them, and just the general perception of graded readers in the Refold community. Graded readers have been made for second language learners and are not just children's books. There is a huge difference. Children's books will have a simple story with child-appropriate language. Child-appropriate language, however, is different from the language that would be most useful for a second language learner. Children know all the different animals and leaves and trees and they know a bunch of food and sounds and that is really unnecessary for a second language learner. What second language learners need is common words. Therefore, graded readers are slightly more complex, more compelling in their story, yet written with common words. I know that a lot of graded readers don't exactly check the compelling box, but a well-written graded reader would be an engaging story for an adult. Okay, and the next thing that I know where they're coming from, but as an avid second language reader that knows how to use online tools, I would have to wholeheartedly disagree with how they approach reading. On the website, it says that you should aim for a book where only 2-3% to of the words are unknown, because that way you don't have to look up as much, or rather, barely anything, because looking things up takes away from your immersion time. I assume that this 2-3% to mark is taken from the Paul Nation paper in which he talks about extensive reading and 2-3% to generally being a level where you can comfortably read pretty much anything and still learn. Just for reference, 2-3% to unknown words are about 5 words per normal book page. The 2-3% to rule is probably only applicable if you want to do extensive reading in a physical book. Why do I say this? Well, if you don't want to break the flow of your reading and open a dictionary app or even worse, a physical dictionary every time you find an unknown word, then yes, 5 words per page is probably more than enough to keep you busy. But we have evolved past physical books and physical dictionaries. You can read e-texts and instantly look up any unknown words. It literally takes less than a second. Absolutely no time lost. And with the power of pop-up dictionaries and e-texts, we can actually read things that are well beyond 2-3% to unknown words. And suddenly, you unlock the whole world of more complex but more compelling content to read. Realistically, as a beginner and even as an intermediate learner, you will never ever get to only 2-3% to of unknown words. The only two ways you could reach such a low number of unknown words is that either you already know a lot of words, and I'm talking tens of thousands of words, which is obviously not something someone in the beginning or intermediate stages is gonna have. So we're pretty much talking only really advanced learners here, or graded readers that are so easy, super simplified, and probably boring. By the time you can read a graded reader at 2-3% to unknown words, you could be out there with a pop-up dictionary reading Percy Jackson and having way more fun. Am I saying that everything you read has to be 50% unknowns? No, but when you start out, it might as well be that. And then you keep reading and you keep reading. You wiggle your way through the 40s and you wiggle your way through the 30s. And then by the time you reach the 20s, that is when you start chilling. Once you reach the 20s, once you reach 20, you will notice that you will be stuck there for a long, long time. But over time, you will slowly notice that some things might go down to 15, then 10. And eventually, after a really, really long time, you'll notice that then things are 2-3%. to By then, you'll be an advanced learner, or at least an advanced reader. What I'm trying to say is that you can start to read way sooner than you think. You don't have to wait for that magic 2-3% to mark. And it's not gonna hurt your language progress. Quite the opposite, it's gonna speed up your language progress. It's still gonna be a long journey, but it will be way faster than if you never read. And also, please use e-texts and pop-up dictionaries. Make use of the tools and technology we have today. And look up many, many, many things. Many, many, many times it will help. Okay, and that concludes this video. These seven things are things that I noticed in the community and I figured I would just share my own thoughts and I encourage you to share what you think of these ideas as well. Do you generally agree? Do you disagree? 
Maybe you see some other things that are problematic. Please remember, I'm not trying to hate on the refold community or on the refold roadmap. I just like to think about these ideas and I hope you enjoyed hearing about them. I worked on these ideas for a very long time and I hope that kind of came through in the video. Let me know if you liked it and I'll see you in the next video.